Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Adrian Monk uh, from the World Economic Forum. It's my great pleasure to uh, welcome you here this morning and also to welcome five of our co-chairs for this uh, meeting of the annual, uh, this annual meeting of the new champions. Um, I'm just going to introduce them briefly. I'm joined by Francis Collins, director of the National Institute of Health from the USA and also a member of the Forum's Global Agenda Council on the future of the health sector, by Chung Wei, the founder, chairman of the board and CEO of Didi Kwai Di from the People's Republic of China, by uh, Ken Hu, deputy chairman and uh, rotating CEO of Huawei Technologies, also a member of our Global Agenda Council on the Future of Digital Communication, and by Chung Wei, uh, sorry, by um, I'm just looking down the panel at my list, unable quite to see to the end. And uh, by Lee Regang, founding chairman of CMC Capital Partners and CMC Holdings Limited. Um, and lastly, by Carlos uh, Moedas, the Commissioner for Research, Science and Innovation at the European Commission in Brussels. So we're going to hear from each of our co-chairs about uh, their thoughts and expectations from this meeting. And then we'll move in. We'll have uh, a little time for questions. And just a reminder, if we could keep questions uh, directed to the theme of the meeting uh, and if you could also identify yourself and your news organization when you introduce yourself. So I'm going to begin by asking uh, Carlos to share some of his uh, thoughts ahead of this meeting. Carlos. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, first of all, for uh, all of you and for being here. Uh, you know, uh, this annual meeting uh, really takes place uh, at the aftermath uh, of a huge economic crisis in Europe. And very difficult years uh, were actually uh, in the past for many countries uh, in the European continent. And so what you saw was a crisis of private debt that was followed by a crisis of sovereign debt. And at the same time, you look and you have other crises coming up. You have uh, today, as we speak, a new crisis on emerging in Europe about migrants. Uh, just to give you a, a rough number, since the beginning of the year, we had more than 400,000 refugees that have applied for asylum in the EU. And today, uh, we are at a tipping point. I mean, today, President Juncker will actually announce uh, measures of unprecedented scale on this matter. But if I look at the past, what I see is that in China and in Europe, you see that the contribution for growth of innovation has actually not been increasing. And that's probably the big part of the problem. Innovation is defined in economic terms as the multi-factor productivity. And you see that that multi-factor productivity has actually a contributor to growth has not been increasing it properly. So we have to look at the future and think, what do we have to do? What's the only way, what's the model to increase that productivity? And the model is about really innovation, science, and research. And if I look at the future, I look at it with hope, because I see a new generation, a new generation of young scientists, of young innovators, of young researchers that are actually doing that and are doing that in a very different way and in a very different world that we have to adapt. Because science in the digital world is very different from science in the physical world. Because areas like health, like energy, like food, like water will be so different from the past. And so it's actually that tipping point that we are at and that I'm very hopeful, I'm very positive about the future. You know, uh, when you look at innovators in the past uh, 100 years, you see that they all have three characteristics. Actually, uh, there's a book by Walter Isaacson called The Innovators, where he describes it very well. They all have collaboration skills. They have diversity from different areas, from different fields, from different, different cultural backgrounds. And they really bring together different types of science with arts and humanities. And when I look at the new champions, which is actually what we are talking about here today, the new champions of today, the new companies of today, they actually bring that together. Diversity, collaboration, and science and humanities coming together at an intersection 
that creates innovation in science. So thank you very much, and uh, I'm really looking forward to these three days here uh, in Davos, uh, in, 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 in actually in the World Economic Forum in Dallin, I'm sorry, and uh, looking forward for the questions that you might have. Thank you very much. And no problem. Carlos, it's often known as Summer Davos, so uh, <laughs> we, we so can I'm see okay. the confusion. You're okay. Um, so Didi Kwaidi is at the uh, forefront of some of the sharing economy innovation that's going on here in China. Just going to ask uh, Chung Wei to uh, explain some of his hopes and uh, thoughts ahead of this meeting. Harder. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm the founder and the CEO of uh, I'm very glad to be here, the Summer Davos. Uh, the, our job is to facilitate the transportation, and our job is the same as Davos wants to change the world. So I'm very glad to be here as the one of the co-chairs to participate deeply in this uh, World Economic Forum. In the last uh, three years of our starting up, it's the year where applied uh, internet technologies to the taxi services and uh, with uh, the smartphone-based, uh, the shared economy, as well as uh, sharing uh, the cost uh, and uh, the shared bus couple different uh, models uh, of the transportation. I think internet is shaping the way that we move in the last uh, three years uh, about 200 million and uh, 8 uh, million taxi drivers are contributing to our platform. So our goal is uh, zero wait time for your sedan service, uh, chauffeur service, uh, and a happy road. So now we have the third anniversary as well as the opening of this uh, uh, annual meeting. So we changed our name from the DD Dacha to the DD Chuxing, which means uh, DD Facilitate uh, Movement. We have been appreciated by the capital market. We recently closed another round of financing about uh, 3 billion US dollars. So uh, we are working out some valuable. So in the last three years, in spite of the ups and downs and the winter and summers, so we have been persistent to our core value, which we have a firm belief in. And we participated in these annual meetings. I just uh, attended the robot show and a kind of development of the artificial intelligence as robot technologies. And we are trying to forecast the impact on the future. So we hope we can have an uh, open mind, open eyes. Uh, and I firmly appreciate uh, this diversified discussion cherished by this diverse uh, World Economic Forum. I hope all of you have a good experience here. Thank you. Um, one of the technology companies that's uh, making an impact on a global level is Huawei. Um, Ken Hu, can I ask you to share some of your thoughts and expectations for this meeting and how technology is going to be helping to address some of the global challenges we're looking at here in Dalian? Uh, uh, thank you, um, Arjun. And good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be uh, here for this uh, press conference, and very much, and I'm very much honored to, to co-chair this year's uh, summer hours in uh, in Dalia. And this year's theme is uh, charting a new cause for the growth. And as a technology provider, because we are the largest ICT company in China and uh, one of the leading companies in the world, we're very excited about the uh, tremendous opportunity presented in the digital in the digital age. If we, if we look ahead, we expect that the ICT technology, for example, the uh, mobile broadband, the cloud computing, and big data, and internet of things will fundamentally change the way we live and work. Um, Commissioner Carlos just mentioned that you know, how big uh, the change will be made by the digital technology. And Mr. Chen just mentioned that you know how our life will be changed by the emerging technology and also the business model by the, by the DD Quite. So we anticipate that our world is becoming more and more connected, people and people, people and things and things and things. From our um, anticipation, there will be 
uh, 100 billion connections by the year of 2025. That means we're going to increase the connection globally for at least 10 times from now on. And, and then we're going to expect that all the countries and economies will continue their investment in the ICT infrastructure, the broadband, the optical transmission network, and different applications to meet the uh, faster growing demand of the digital age. So I do believe that the ICT will play a significant role to drive the growth of global, global economy and itself will create tremendous opportunities for, for all of us. And this is my, uh, my ninth time to participate in the uh, Summer Davos in China and the five, uh, fifth time in, in Dalian. Here, I'm very happy to see that there are lots of new uh, elements related to, to the technology across the whole forum. In the corridor, you're going to see a lot of you know, uh, demonstration of uh, robots of 3D uh, and uh, um, artificial intelligence. And there are a lot of sessions that this year, in this year's acknowledging the ICT potential to transform the economy and the societies. So I will just mention a few of them. For example, the digitizing international trade shows how digital technology is changing the global supply chain and the patterns of the consumption. And the China's digital disruptors looks at the innovative company like the Didi Kuaicha that have transformed the way how we live and work in China. And also the session of connecting the unconnected, which I'm honored to participate tomorrow, will focus on the measures we're going to take for the unconnected populations globally. This will remind us that while we are enjoying the latest technology, while we are pursuing the fa faster network, there are still 4 billion populations globally without any access to the internet. That also reminds us that as part of the mission of the World Economic Forum, which is to change the state of the world, we should pay extra effort to deal with this challenge and to avoid deepening the new digital divide. So I will welcome all of you to join that discussion for this very important topic. So finally, I look forward to a fruitful discussion and debate in the next couple of days. And I wish the conference a great success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One of the biggest things technology is changing is, is health outcomes. And also, uh, besides digital technology, biotechnology and genetic research is making a huge impact. And it's part of the discussion that we're having here at the forum. And it's uh, great to be able to welcome Francis Collins as a co-chair, directs the National Institutes of Health in the USA. Francis, can you tell us a little bit more about what you're hoping to achieve here? Sure. Thanks, Adrian. And it is a great privilege to be one of the co-chairs uh, for the Summer Davos uh, here in Dalian. The theme, of course, is charting a new course for growth. So how does health play a role there? I think everybody recognizes that as GDP increases, health of a population tends to increase. That's the famous Preston curve from back in 1975. What people may don't realize quite as broadly but is well documented, that improving the health of a population also adds uh, to economic growth. People who are healthy have higher productivity. Children who are healthy are more likely to learn and develop cognitive skills. Uh, people who have an expectation of longevity are more likely to save. All of those things play out in a virtuous circle between advances in health and economic growth. Not to mention, of course, that research in health is a major source of economic growth because the science and technology, which in this era uh, where life science has really become such a dominant force in terms of science and technology, has been well documented to give a return on investment uh, that is multifold. The Genome Project, for instance, recently assessed what its economic value was from the roughly $4 billion the U.S. put into the Genome Project estimates now that it is close to a trillion dollars in economic return just in the U.S. as a result of having done that. There are now unprecedented opportunities in health research. Some of them are, in fact, built on genomics, the idea of precision medicine, stem cell biology, the opportunity to figure out how to take cells from an individual and convince them to become almost any other kind of cell for diagnostic, for therapeutic purposes, neuroscience, 
the effort that we now are engaged in quite seriously is an international collaboration to understand how those 86 billion neurons between your ears do what they do and what that might mean for understanding Alzheimer's disease or autism or schizophrenia. All of those are really exciting initiatives and the discoveries that are happening in biomedical research are breathtaking, but many of us are still concerned that the lag time is too long between when you have learned something uh, about human biology and human medicine and when it actually can get implemented across uh, the country, across the world, in the valley of death where things sometimes get stuck instead of being translated into clinical benefit. But I think there's reason to point to other developments that may help us in this regard. Participants in research are increasingly interested not in being passive but being an active uh, participant. And likewise, uh, people in general don't think of their health care as something that somebody else does for them. They want to be part of it. That's a good thing. That means you have empowered uh, patients who want the information, who are well informed. The ability to use cell phone technology with a wide variety of very exciting wearable sensors now coming into a reality to monitor the body's performance whether it is measuring blood pressure in an ambulatory way or measuring blood glucose in somebody with diabetes in a continuous fashion to optimize their treatment. Those are enormous advances if we can implement them effectively. And the opportunity now in increasing numbers to have medical records in electronic form also opens up all sorts of possibilities to speed up the process of moving discoveries into translation into the real world. So I'm delighted that this topic of health is a major focus of this meeting here in Dalian and that many of the new champions that I'm looking forward to talking with in the course of the next couple of days are in fact doing research in that area. And obviously we have a lot to do to make this vision come true about how health can advance across the world, uh, economies be they big or small. But the principles are very compelling and the science has never been more exciting than it is right now. Thank you very much. And lastly, one of the most visible areas where we're seeing technology make an impact is in media and entertainment. And uh, certainly uh, one person who has uh, first-hand experience of how that impact is being felt is Lee Regang, founding chairman of CMC Capital Partners and CMC Holdings. Uh, Mr. Lee, can I ask you to share some thoughts on the media landscape as it's changing with technology? Sure. Uh, thank you, Arjun. Um, it's my great honor to be one of the chairs uh, sitting here uh, to attend this year's forum. Um, compared with Ms. Hu, um, I didn't come here too often, so this is my second time to be Dalian to attend this event. And um, I'm, I'm also very glad to see um, you know, on the list there are so many peer companies and their, their business, uh, you know, business heads uh, coming to, coming to Dalian to present in different panels and workshops um, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So I'm sure um, this year um, this would be a productive uh, platform for the, all the great uh, minds to, to exchange and to explore. Uh, I come from the uh, media side, the, the media and or the media entertainment circle. So currently, uh, not only in China, all the, all the world and the rest of, including the rest of the world, uh, the whole uh, media, the, the whole media landscape, is being changed dramatically. Uh, the theme is the the fundamental infrastructure of the whole media entertainment industry. Um, it's going to be a big, big transformation. Um, all the you know these new contents, new platforms, uh, new devices, uh, new models are emerging. So I think right now the situation is this is a very critical moment for all the media operators to think about their future. The future will be changed. And what you, have, what you are familiar with in the past cannot fit into the future. So um, I'm very glad to see you know, a lot of topics you know, in tomorrow's panels, you know, we're talking about, you know, those kind of, you know, those new trends. And uh, I will be also, I, I, I will also be involved in some of those discussions. And hopefully, those discussions could be very productive, constructive. And uh, um, personally, I think um, right now I'm also doing media investments, besides the operation, also media investments. So uh, looking for the opportunities in this side and uh, continue to be uh, passionate 
and uh, keep move, you know, keep moving is also very important for for myself and for 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 all of us. So, wish this forum a big success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all our panelists. Um, just to look at the room, can I get a sense from people's hands? Uh, so please put your hand in the air if you would like to ask a question. We have about 10 minutes for questions, then I can get a sense of uh, how many questions we need to field. So if I can ask if you have a question, just raise, raise your hand. What a very shy audience we have in the media today, this morning. So uh, I'm going to start with the two ladies uh, at the front. So please, can we get a, a microphone to you? And can you just tell us uh, where you're from? And uh, also, can you make sure your question is aimed at the whole panel? Thank you. OK. Pan Bo Shan, Yejo Kan Ji Zhe. Then I have a question to ask Chen Wei Xian. Just you just said you just completed a round of 30 million dollar investment. Can I ask you this investment? Um, a th uh, three billion investment. And uh, who is the investor? And what kind of business are you going to use that three billion investment? And you also finished a 1.4 billion investment. Uh, and uh, what do you think of the competition of that? Okay. Exactly the sort of question I was saying uh, would be brilliant to answer, probably individually. Um, can I just take the question from <laughs> lady there? I'm from the uh, uh, financing the first, and uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Chen Wei another question. Just now, you mentioned uh, you changed the D. The, the way people travel is changed by DD and also is actually a challenge for the traditional way for people to travel by using taxi. So when we talk about the shared economy and the existing economy, how do you integrate it, the traditional existing one with the new ones? Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, if we only use the so-called existing supply of transportation, we can never solve the people's problem of uh, traveling. We are talking about the tidal moment, meaning the rush hour in the morning and during the afternoon. We have to solve that problem, so we would like to integrate it the existing resources without adding more supply to it, meaning to improve the efficiency of the existing resources. Traffic is kind of resources like other resources. And uh, during the faster human development, we have to break that bottleneck. The key point for that is to uh, is to share. It's not like everybody hold that resources. We have to use the existing resources to the maximum. And in the future, not everybody needs to buy a car. Maybe you buy a car, you spend only 5% of the lifetime of that car to use it. So we would like to provide less car, more efficiency. And you know, in the uh, past uh, few days during the parade, uh, traffic limit and management, it seems that uh, we do not suffer from the traffic jam. And uh, then those drivers use the, for example, example, the share platform for Didi and Kwaidi, we enjoy more than 10 million uh, the uh, time and person users to use our their services. So this is actually the change we experienced for the transportation and traveling perspective during the past three years. With the uh, connection of internet and the taxi industry, we have uh, fundamental changes. But the last three years is only the starting point, and we will integrate the more transportation vehicles in together into that uh, platform and to meet the needs of the general public. We believe that with the limited resources of roads and taxis, we need to have these integrated resources. For example, we have the taxi, we have the quite sure chauffeur driving, carpool. So we need a more flexible way to solve the problem, to have a uh, internet-based or science-based solutions to solve people's problem of traveling. So uh, we also believe that it can improve the uh, city's efficiency for that three billion U.S. dollars investment, many donate, uh, uh, investors, including some Chinese companies like Ping An, they uh, participate in the first rounds of the investment. So we believe traveling is not simply the problem of traveling; it's actually the uh, not which could connect other companies and industries together. We work together to solve this problem. Thank you. Okay.
Hi, I'm from The Economist, and uh, I have two uh, questions. Mr. Hu, you mentioned connecting and being connected, and also the sharing of the global economy. So we would like to talk about the uh, capacity uh, cooperation at the international level. What does that mean to the global economy, de economic development? Could you comment on that? Second question goes to Mr. Cheng. You mentioned about the Didi Kuaizhe. Mainly, you focus on your business. So I would like to ask, you know, Didi Kuaizhe is uh, in innovative solutions for traveling. And uh, for such kind of innovation, what are the role played by these innovative industries towards the China development and world development? Thank you. How? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Talking about uh, at the background of globalization, the international capa uh, capacity cooperation at international level is a global issue. You know, globalization for an enterprise means opportunities for that enterprise to integrate this market. And in this market at global level, we could actually uh, integrate those the, uh, people and the staff and resources and capacity to make it more efficient. So. Um, globalization provides us actually great opportunities for all the industries, manufacturing, IT industries, great opportunities for further cooperation because we have a bigger space for cooperation, bigger platform for the market expansion and also in a bigger scale to efficiently allocate our resources and to improve the enterprise's efficiency. And we could also build a global chain of your value. Then you could have a stabilized client. So this global chain of the uh, value could provide your customer more value too. Okay, thank you. As for innovation, during our development, we have two observations. Number one, innovation is something we have to do. It's a must. There is a problem there, but there is no existing solutions. So you have to think of a solutions independently to solve that problem. And then we uh, equalize innovation to independent thinking, meaning there is a thing there. You have to think, or a problem there. You have to think of an creative way to solve that problem, and then you could find that creative solutions. For example, the earlier stage of Didi Da Chua, we how can we encourage taxi drivers to use internet, and how could we encourage the customer to use internet to the call taxis? So internationally, we didn't really integrate taxi driving or taxi using into this um, the technological development. And also later, for example, we developed the WeChat Pay, and these are all innovative way to make it more convenient and uh, faster. So these are actually what we get when we confront with the problem. Secondly, innovation also needs the uh, corporate culture and the corporate policy to guarantee to make it lively. And for example, you encourage your staff to think independently and creatively. So I believe that for the summer Davos, I heard different voice. So diversity is important. Cross industry communication is also very important. These are are the origin and source of new ideas. So I'm very happy to see that uh, with this internet and other Chinese industries, because of the fierce competition, we feel that uh, we have more collision and integration. So we have a lot of the new problem, for example, O2O, oh, industries, sometimes they are actually first appeared in China, then in the world, in the other parts of the world. So we do not think that China is backward. Rather, China is more advanced in some of the uh, need a more open environment of cultivating the independent thinking and the innovative thinking. These are the momentums for future development. Thank you. You'll be able to see all of them in sessions throughout the meeting. And if you have more questions for each of them, I'm sure they'll be delighted to take them up one to one. Uh, I'm going to release them now because I know their schedules are very busy. Thanks to all of you. And we have another press conference with our remaining co chairs at 1 30. So I look forward to seeing you back there for that. Thank you. Thanks very much.